uh, and an intensifying tropical storm well on its way to becoming a hurricane before reaching the Big Bend coast of Florida during the day on Monday. Uh, data from the uh, Air Force and NOAA uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft show that Debbie has strengthened this morning. The maximum sustained winds are up to about 65 miles per hour. We've also seen the central pressure drop several millibars over the last few hours. You can see the shower and thunderstorm activity starting to consolidate around the center. Uh, some signs and radar imagery that it's starting to try and develop an eye wall, and that will be the, uh, the key for Debbie to go on and intensify, perhaps even rapidly strengthen before it makes landfall along the Florida Big Bend coast tomorrow. Right now, looking at the radar, you can see an expanse of uh, rain and shower and thunderstorm activity uh, well to the east of Debbie's center, affecting portions of the Florida Gulf Coast and the uh, uh, dry Tortugas all the way up to places like Cape Coral and uh, Sarasota up into the Tampa Bay region, even seeing a couple of tornado warnings popping up this morning. So there's going to be multiple hazards that are going to play out in association with Debbie. Over the next 24 hours, we're going to focus on the Florida Big Bend coastline where we're going to see the uh, life-threatening storm surge inundation as well as hurricane force winds near where the landfall occurs. Then we're going to see longer term, a potentially catastrophic flooding event from heavy rainfall unfold, uh, especially in coastal Georgia and coastal South Carolina as we go through the week. So let's start off with the storm surge hazards. We have a storm surge warning that's in effect from the middle of Longboat Key all the way up to Indian Pass. So that includes the Tampa Bay region. Uh, but we're very concerned about this region here from Oklahoma River to the Suwannee River. Somewhere in this area, we're expecting to see six to 10 feet of storm surge inundation above ground level. So I'm six feet tall. That's water up to four feet over my head. Somewhere in this region, there are mandatory and voluntary evacuations that have been at, uh, called for in the counties through much of this storm surge warning area. So please, if you have been asked to evacuate by your local officials and you live in one of those storm surge evacuation zones, you still have time to get to a safe place. You want to be where you're going to ride out the storm no later than sundown tonight as tropical storm conditions are going to start to arrive along the coast within the storm surge warning area by this evening with hurricane conditions expected overnight and early Monday. Uh, moving on up to the north, we also have a storm surge watch in effect for portions of the Georgia and South Carolina coast from the mouth of the St. Mary's River up to South Santee River with two to four feet of inundation possible along the immediate coastline here. That's going to exacerbate the flooding along the coast from that very heavy rainfall that's going to play out. Uh, on to the wind hazards and the track forecast. We have tropical storm warnings in effect for the entire west coast of Florida uh, from the southwest tip of the peninsula up through the Tampa Bay region up to uh, the uh, Suwannee River, and then a hurricane warning in effect from the Suwannee River to Oklahoma River, and that's in, we're expecting Debbie's center to cross the coast somewhere within that hurricane warning area uh, by early tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So uh, by Monday morning, we're gonna see the hurricane making landfall somewhere along the Florida Big Bend coast, the potential for expecting hurricane force winds somewhere within that warning area. So you wanna be use the rest of the today to get your property ready, put up any shutters, secure any loose items, uh, be planning for widespread power outages, tree damage, some structural damage as well. Most of the fatalities we see from wind and tropical storms and hurricanes are related to people being outdoors and having trees fall on them. So please, again, find a safe place to be in by nightfall tonight and plan to shelter in place through much of the day on Monday. Now, the complicating factor with Debbie is that after the storm makes landfall, it's going to slow to a crawl as it moves very slowly across uh, southern Georgia and up to coastal South Carolina. This is our forecast position on Monday evening. And here we are all, all the way on to Thursday morning with uh, Debbie moving very slowly. We could see the system stall. We could see a looping motion. So while the track forecast in the details is uncertain here, we are very confident we're going to have a slow moving system that's going to result in multiple days of very, very heavy rainfall. We also could see tropical storm conditions along the coast of Georgia and the South Carolina coast up to South Santee River within the next 48 hours where we have a tropical storm storm watch in effect there. Uh, if we move on to the arrival time of tropical storm force winds, again, within that hurricane warning and storm surge warning area, by this evening, those tropical storm conditions are going to be on your doorstep. So you're going to want to be sheltering in place by that time. Now let's move on to the rainfall threat. And this is going to really play out across North Florida, much of southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina. These are flood watches and flash flood watches that are in effect now. But there are some really um, amazing rainfall totals being forecast and amazing in a very bad way. Across North Florida, we're expecting widespread rainfall totals of 6 to 12 inches with isolated amounts as high as 18 inches. And then once we get into the Savannah, Hilton Head, Beaufort area up to Charleston, we're expecting widespread rainfall totals of 10 to 20 inches with isolated amounts as high as 30 inches. That would be record breaking rainfall associated with a tropical cyclone for both the states of Georgia and South Carolina if we got up to the 30 inch 
level. And it's important to put that amount of rainfall into context because what we're most concerned about is the potential for uh, catastrophic flooding, uh, especially as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday from places like Myrtle Beach, Georgetown, Charleston, Beaufort, Hilton Head, Savannah, everywhere you see in pink, that's the highest level alert that we can put out for the potential for flash flooding. And that's a level four out of four risk. The broader risk of significant flash flooding all the way from North Florida up through much of Eastern Georgia and South Carolina into Southeastern North Carolina as we go through the next several days. But I wanna quickly go over what that high risk of flash flooding means. That means we're expecting widespread flash flooding severe widespread flash flooding and areas that don't normally flood will also experience flooding and these high risk days are where we see the majority of property damage and a, a large portion of the loss of life due to freshwater flooding which has been the biggest killer in tropical storms and hurricanes uh, in the united states over the last 10 years so this is a very serious situation you're going to want to pay attention to any flood watches or warnings that are issued and be prepared to move to higher ground uh, as we go through the week um, finally, I want to touch on the tornado threat. We just had a tornado watch issued for much of the Florida Peninsula from the Fort Myers area up through Tampa, Orlando, including Jacksonville and Tallahassee. This uh, watch will be in effect until 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, as we get the daytime heating, we're going to see the rain band, the uh, showers and thunderstorms associated with the rain bands. Uh, on the east side of Debbie uh, become more intense and we'll see what can usually be quick forming tornadoes occur. So again, have multiple ways to get uh, warning information through a NOAA weather radio uh, apps on your smartphone and wireless emergency alerts. So I wanna just touch briefly again on the key points uh, for Tropical Storm Debbie that's expected to make landfall as a hurricane uh, early Monday morning in the Florida Big Bend region. We're expecting heavy rainfall resulting in considerable flooding impacts from the Florida Big Bend region through Southeast Georgia and coastal plain of the Carolinas through Friday. And we could see potentially historic heavy rainfall amounts across Southeast Georgia and South Carolina resulting in possibly catastrophic flooding and significant river flooding through the week. Uh, there's the danger of life-threatening storm surge along the Florida Big Bend Coast. We could see, are expecting to see six to 10 feet of inundation above ground level within portions of that storm surge warning area uh, between Oklahoma River and Sewanee River on Monday. So residents in those, in those areas, please heed any evacuation advice you've been given by your local officials. We're expecting hurricane conditions within that hurricane warning area, also extending inland. So be prepared for power outages, be prepared to protect your property and, and gather up any items outside that might become projectiles uh, in strong winds and be prepared again to shelter in place within those storm surge and hurricane warning areas in a safe place by nightfall tonight. So uh, you can get more information from us here at the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov throughout the day. We'll be providing updates and you can find more information uh, on your local weather at your web local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. So please stay tuned for more information. We'll be back with you uh, with more later today. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.